Good day once again. We're at 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse, uh, I believe we were at 16. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. Notes. Because David had made the covenant with Jonathan, even David's enemies would have to recognize it, or else they'd have to deal with David. In a sense, this is the same covenant that we now have as believers with the Lord Christ, of whom David is a type. Even the Lord's enemies, and we speak of the powers of darkness, of course, they have to recognize this covenant, and above all, they have to recognize this covenant. Yeah, we're going to get to heaven because of these types of covenants. Anyways, verse 17. And Jonathan caused David to swear again because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and you shall be missed because your seat will be empty. And when you have stayed three days, then you shall go down quickly and come to the place where you did hide yourself when the business was in hand, and shall remain by the stone easel. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad, saying, Go find out the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of you, Take them, then you can come. For there is peace to you and no hurt, as the Lord lives. Verse 22, But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond you, go your way, for the Lord has sent you away. And as touching the matter which you had and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord be between you and me forever. Notes. All of this would tell David of Saul's true disposition toward him. It's kind of a smoke signal, only it's using arrows. Verse 24. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king set him down to eat meat. And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spoke not anything that day, for he thought something has befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. Notes. Well, obviously, this is talking about the ceremonial defilements back in the book of Leviticus. Uh, if you look at about chapter 15, verses 1 up to about 20, that should put you in the right idea if, you, if you're unfamiliar with this. Anyways, verse 27. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore comes not the son of Jesse to the meal, neither yesterday nor today? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked, Leave of me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, Let me go, I pray you, for our family has a sacrifice in the city, and my brother he has commanded me to be there. And now if I have found favor in your eyes, let me get away, I pray you, and see my brethren. Therefore he comes not unto the king's table. Verse 30. And Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, You son of that perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own confusion, and unto the confusion of your mother's nakedness? Notes. What Saul is saying is absolutely despicable. You see, in that culture, the greatest possible insult to a man is to call his mother vile names, kind of similar to what we have today. The latter phrase refers to a mother feeling ashamed and disgraced at having born such a rotten, filthy son. Oh, yeah, so horrible. Jonathan is just such a rotten person, can't you tell? Verse 31. For as long as the son of Jesse lives upon the ground, you shall not be established, nor your kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain, and what has he done? Verse 33, and this really kind of gets under my skin right here. And Saul cast a javelin at Jonathan to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to kill David. Notes. You see, Saul is accusing all of these people of doing all these wrong things, and yet he throws a javelin at his own son. Kind of the pot calling the kettle black, sort of. Verse 34. 
So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did not eat no meat the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. Uh, verse 35. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the same time, or at the time appointed with David, and a little lad with him. And he said unto the lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as, he, and as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried for the lad and said, Is not the arrow beyond you? Notes. Now, obviously, this was the prearranged signal that David was a, he was in acute danger back in verse uh, 22. Verse 38. And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, and stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything. Only Jonathan and David knew of this matter. Notes. The child had absolutely no knowledge of what was really going on at least as it regards the matter between David and Jonathan. Verse 40, And Jonathan gave his artillery unto his lad, and said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south, and fell on his face to the ground, and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another, and wept one with the other, until David exceeded. Notes. Uh, they they broke down in grief and they were just completely mastered by it, completely overrun with grief because of the situations that are not very good. Verse 42, And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and you, and between my seed and your seed forever. And he who was David arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Notes. This covenant would stand, it was in uh, chapter 18, verses 3 through 4. We're on to chapter 21 now. Then came David to Nob to Ahimelech, the priest, who was the high priest also. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David and said unto him, Why are you alone and no man with you? Notes. It seemed very strange to Ahimelech that David was traveling in this manner, considering that he was the king's son-in-law. Anyways, verse 2. And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king has commanded me a business, and has said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send you, and what I have commanded you. Notes. Well, obviously this is a lie. Scripture. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Notes. All, well, all of this teaches the bitter lesson that departure from the path of faith not only means loss of all personal dignity, but it also involves injuries to others quite possibly as well. And thus, as Abraham, when he left the path of faith, became the occasion of sickness and disease to the Egyptians. That's in Genesis chapter 12, verse 17. So David's conduct actually caused the death of the high priest and 85 of his fellow priests together with their wives and children. Chapter 22, verses 18 through 19. Horrible, really. Verse 3. Now therefore, what is under your hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or what there is present. And we must pick up in chapter 21, verse 4 of the book of 1 Samuel. Thank you. And God bless.